How's it going guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today what I've got for you is a brand new FIFA 21 ratings prediction video. For cheap, fast and reliable FIFA 20 Ultimate Team coins, check out u7buy.com and use code HABER to get yourself 5% off all of your orders. Today, as you may be able to tell by the red lights behind me, we are doing my favourite team, the club I support, Manchester United. Two things before we get into the video. First thing, I am currently away on holiday right now, so this video is being pre-recorded about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, it depends on what day I upload this. So if there's been any of the transfer news, any transfers made or anything like that, they won't be included in this video. I've chosen to include most of the players that play for Maynard right now. I've left out a few that I think will be uh, sent away or, or transferred away in the current transfer window. And also the other thing, if you agree or disagree with any of these ratings, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear your feedback. Uh, we're going to be doing a Liverpool one. Either we've already done it or we'll be doing one pretty soon, uh, depending again on when I upload this. So make sure you look out for that and go watch it if you haven't already, um, depending on if it's up now or not. Make sure to drop a like on the video. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. We're starting off with our number one, our goalkeeper, David De Gea. Now, I've actually given him a downgrade from 89 rated to 87 rated. Basically, the reason being uh, is because I personally think that De Gea uh, hasn't been as good as he has been in the past and doesn't warrant an 89 rated card this year. I think an 87 is pretty fair, uh, given the fact that he's he, he's made a lot of mistakes. He's been pretty solid, uh, but he's made a lot of mistakes as well. So I've given him an 87. It could be an 88, and I think an 88 would also be fair. Uh, I went with 87. Uh, to, to kind of go a little bit lower on that spectrum uh, with just a bog standard rating downgrade, really. Should probably mention, I didn't actually include Dean Henderson in this because I totally forgot about Dean Henderson up until literally this point when I just talked about hair. Next one is Aaron Wambasaka going from a 79 rated to an 83. It's a bit of a big jump, I won't lie. However, I think he's been incredibly solid for Man United this season. Been one of the better right backs in the entire league. Obviously, he got a team of the season item, team of the season item in FIFA as well. So EA also agree that he's been very good. Uh, I think he deserves it personally. Uh, I think he deserves a bit of an upgrade. Could also be an 82, 83. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see. Didn't give him too big of an upgrade on dribbling, but I gave him uh, a plus one on pace, a plus four on defending, and a plus eight on physical, because he is quite a physical guy. I'm not entirely sure why it was only 72. Uh, I gave him a big upgrade on passing as well, because he's had quite a few assists in terms of uh, drilling the ball across from a right wing back or, a, or a, you know, an offensive right back position. Uh, didn't give him much of a shooting boost because he didn't really warrant it. Uh, but I think that's pretty fair. The next one is Victor Lindelof, who I gave a plus one. I was going to leave him the same, but I think he does warrant a plus one. If we look at other 82 rated Premier League centre backs, uh, I think it's pretty fair. Looking at the likes of Joel Matip and people like that, I think he's on uh, a similar level, if not better than the likes of Joel Matip uh, and other Premier League centre backs. So I'll give him an 82 to be fair. Uh, I also uh, I give, uh, well, you're about to see him now, I give Harry Maguire a plus one as well. And I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, let's talk about Harry Maguire. Now, I give him a plus one. And you're probably thinking, why have you given him a plus one? I know Harry Maguire has been incredibly memed recently, but Manchester United have the best defensive record from the top five leagues this year, or last year, technically now. Um, but we had the best defensive record of the top five leagues. And although Harry Maguire has made a few mistakes, for the most part of the season, he was incredibly solid. I think that unfortunately, uh, post lockdown, when we were all kind of really focused on Premier League football, um, he made a couple of really bad mistakes that unfortunately led to goals and it's made him seem like he's an awful centre-back. In reality, I don't think he should have been 82 rated in the first place. He should have been at least 83 from the start of this year, given his Leicester performance. And I think he was a, a very solid centre-back this season. I just don't think he fits the system that we play. He tries to play on the halfway line. He's got about 46 pace, as I've given him on the card. He cannot get back quick enough when someone takes a ball around him. And unfortunately, it leads to a goal. I don't think that's his fault. With a, with a more defensive team, he would absolutely flourish and look like one of the best centre-backs in the whole league. Not with my United, though. That doesn't take away from his individual ability, which is what we're rating right now, uh, which is why I gave him an 83 rated card. Uh, personally, I would have said, given his Leicester performance last year, FIFA 20, he should have had an 84 rated card and it would have been a minus one downgrade. But I think 83 is pretty fair for him. Next up, we actually have one of my favorite players in the squad. It's Luke Shaw. Now, I've given him an 83 rated card from an 81, uh, mainly because he's had a lot of contribution in the side this year. Uh, I think my United have exceeded expectations this year in coming third. Uh, pre-lockdown, a lot of people didn't think we were getting top four regardless. Um, for most of the season, people didn't think we were getting top four. So the fact that we actually got third 
first of all, I think exceeded expectations and, uh, you know, pat on the back for the squad. But I also think Luke Shaw has been a, a vital part of our system. Uh, unfortunately, he got injured the past three or four games in the last the last few of the season, uh, causing Brandon Williams to step in. Um, but all in all, I think Luke Shaw has been a solid left back. Now, I've given a pace downgrade. I gave him a dribbling and, and defending upgrade with a, with a physical and passing upgrade. Kept, kept his shooting the same. He's been really good pushing up and, and linking up with uh, Rashford on that left, which I think is really cool. Uh, so overall, yeah, I think that he warrants an 82 rated card. The next is another player that's been incredible for at least the last six months, and that's Matic. I don't get what happened to Matic but ever since his contract was in question and we were debating giving him a new contract he turned into a whole new player I think it pretty much started with the City game he scored a really nice volley and from there just played absolutely out of his skin for the rest of the season he was part of that starting 11 that won four on the bounce and practically secured his uh third place or at least top four uh with phenomenal efforts and uh and all in all an 80 rate card's pretty fair now one thing I will say as well um a lot of the players that I, I give upgrades to I personally thought had lower than they should have ratings for FIFA 20. I think last year, United didn't really have the world's best season. And I think that, unfortunately, it caused a lot of United players to have pretty harsh downgrades. So it's kind of just rectifying that this year. Um, do I think that Matic has been worthy of a big upgrade? No, it's plus one. An 80 rate card for Matic, is, I think, is pretty fair. I think a lot of people forget how good he was with Chelsea. I don't think that all of that ability just randomly disappeared. Next up, we have Paul Pogba, someone that has been very hit and miss this year. I kept him in an 88 rated. For the first half of the season, he was practically just injured. And from the second half of the season, looked like a really, really good player. Um, he's been really good in the midfield. Uh, I gave him a bit of an upgrade uh, on his dribbling, a downgrade on pace due to the injury. Gave him a downgrade on shooting as well. Kept his passing the same. Give him an upgrade on physical and defending, though. And the reason why is because he played more of a deeper role for the last four or five months. Um, you know, he's been playing behind Bruno as opposed to as our, uh, you know, attacking midfielder or our, our uh, sort of support attacking midfielder. He's been playing more of a, a deeper role, which I think really suited him as well. Um, and his defensive duties have been carried out pretty well. And his physicality is, in my opinion, one of the best in the Premier League. Like, he is so strong on the ball and, and really good at holding people off and things like that. I think the only reason why that, that stat drops down a lot is probably because of his stamina, which is a little bit disappointing. But... Hopefully he can get that on track and we can see an even better card at FIFA 22. Next up, we have the star man himself, Bruno Fernandes. Now, I easily could have given this guy an 88, an 89, uh, but it would have been biased. I'm not going to lie to you, it would have been biased. Uh, I give him an 87 upgrade because I think that at Sporting, he was absolutely fantastic. And for the first sort of two, three months of him being at United, he was on fire as well. Uh, towards the end of the season, uh, I don't think he had bad performances. He just wasn't you know, scoring a ton of goals. He was scoring penalties, obviously, Bruno Fernandes. Okay, very, very funny. But um, he wasn't like, he wasn't uh, as influential as he was in the first three months. So I didn't give him that huge 88 or 89 rated card because I didn't think he warranted it. But I think that for both halves of the season, both at Sporting and at Man United, I think an 87 rated is quite fair. I'd like to think I've not been quite biased on that. You might disagree. I know there's going to be a few people in the comments that just absolutely hate Man United in general and will give me hate for it. But... Uh, what can I do about that? That's football fans at the end of the day. Um, for me, Bruno Fernandes has been a really solid cam. Uh, I do want to quickly clear up as well. I know a lot of my United fans like to rate Fernandes on the level of KDB. I don't. I think KDB is levels above. I think KDB is the best player in the world right now. Maybe joint with Lewandowski uh, and possibly Neymar. Um, but I think that Bruno Fernandes has just had a really good impact on the squad and played really well this year. And if it wasn't for the signing of him in, in January, I honestly don't think we would have came close to third this year. So I'm grateful we signed him. And I, I really think that he deserves at least a plus one. A plus two, I think, would be fair as well. Into the front three now, we've got Marcus Rashford. I have converted from a striker to a left forward and given him a plus two. I, if he didn't slow down towards the back end of the season, it could have been an 86. But uh, for this season, I think personally for the first half of the season, he, him and Martial were absolutely destroying teams. They were so good together. Um, and up until his injury and post-injury, unfortunately, his his goal-scoring menace wasn't quite there. Uh, you know, he wasn't as clinical. He's getting good assists, though, to Martial. He just wasn't as clinical. But I feel like uh, from the team we started the season with, you know, our front three at the start of the season was, was looking like it was going to be Rashford, Martial, and Andreas Pereira. 
I think that we've done pretty well with that front three. I think Marcus Rashford have finished on 18 goals for the season and Martial on 23, which I think is really, really good from both of them uh, and definitely warrant upgrades. They've both worked really well together. So I've given Marsh uh, Rashford, sorry, uh, an 85 rated left forward card. Uh, it could be an 84. It could be an 86. I think 85 is pretty fair. And again, it could be a bit biased for me, but I'm not deliberately trying to be biased with that one. Next up, we have the young prospect that is Mason Greenwood. Um, he started off as a silver this year. I've converted him to a right forward and given him a 76 rated card. I think he will be probably a right forward or right wing. That's where he's played most of the season. Um, and he's really come into his own this year. He looks like a really good young prospect. I don't think anyone's arguing with him looking like a really good young prospect. I've seen a lot of people give him high rated upgrades. I personally left him at 76. And the reason why I gave him a 76 non-rare card is because I think that he he's looked good this season, but I don't think he's exceeded past the levels of, you know, a Phil Foden or uh, any other kind of amazing talent. I think he's been fantastic for an 18, 19 year old. And I think he'll only progress and hopefully gets a January trans uh, January upgrade, sorry. Um, but I don't think it's fair to give him like a 78, 79, 80 rated card just yet because there's definitely room to grow. And I think it's it's not the worst thing in the world starting him off at a 76 non-rare. You know, slow progression, I think, is better than just giving him a huge card and letting people be disappointed, personally. And to finish off the starting 11, we're going with Anthony Martial, who I've converted to a striker because he's been playing there this season and giving him a plus three to an 86 rated card. Honestly, Martial has just looked, he's just looked on form this year. I don't know, especially uh, sort of, you know, the second half of the season. First half of the season, he, he was scoring good goals. But second half of the season, he's just like, he's looked like a man possessed. He's looked absolutely incredible, I feel like. Um, and I'm really glad that he's showing this amazing ability now, um, given that the start of the season, uh, well, not start, but like the first sort of three months of the season, I thought he had a slow start, but... He really started to turn on the pace and uh, he's looked like a really, really good striker. I hope that we can make some really cool signings and hopefully bolster our attack and make him feel more comfortable up top as well. Uh, I like to think that Martial is a player we keep in the, in the club for a while because he's still pretty young. I think he's like, what, 23, 24? Uh, so I'd like to hope that he's someone that we keep in the squad for a long time and, and develop into an even better striker. To speed things up, we have gone with uh, four apiece now for the remaining players that we're doing. Uh, we're starting off with Dan James with a minus one downgrade. Honestly, could have been a minus two, could have been a minus three. I can honestly see him getting a silver card next year. He had a great start to the season and showed that he could strike a ball really well. But apart from that and apart from his pace, he's not really showing much else to his game, unfortunately. He looks like a bit of a donkey. I hope that that changes and I hope that he shows a, a, a you know a bright spark, but we'll have to see. Uh, Fred and McTominay, I've given upgrades to. Fred was an 82 last year and got a downgrade to 79, which I thought was a little bit harsh. An 81, I think, is pretty fair. Him and McTominay had to come into the squad when Pogba was injured to try and change the dynamic of the midfield, and they did that really well. Uh, you know, big games like against Man City. I think we got a draw against Liverpool. Uh, they really showed their ability and their and their uh, their their class against those teams. Uh, I thought that was uh, really good from them. So I've given them both, uh, you know, I'd say minor upgrades. I wouldn't say they've had huge upgrades, to be honest. I've given them, uh, you know, Fred's had a plus two, McTominay a plus one. We gave Agarlo a plus one as well. Uh, given the fact that he came into the squad, he scored a few goals for us. Uh, he did pretty well. You know, I, I don't think he's had a bad season at all. Um, I'd like to say he got a plus one. I feel like sometimes when players come from other teams to... Teams like Man United, Liverpool, Chelsea, things like that, they get they tend to get an upgrade, even if it's just a small upgrade. I know he's still only on loan at Man United, but I can see him getting a bit of an upgrade, to be honest. Next up, we have got the defenders and goalkeeper. We have got Fosu Mensa. I give him a plus one. Uh, he's looked all right this season. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't think he's why he doesn't warrant a gold card, but I think a 74 rated is all right. Uh, very small upgrade. Um, I gave Dallo the, pretty much the same rating. Give him a plus two on pace, but a minus two on defending. Uh, to be honest, Dallo's shown that he's a little bit better attacking than he is defensively. Um, so I give him a bit of a pace upgrade and, 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 and a, a defending downgrade. Romero kept exactly the same. Uh, Brandon Williams, I've given a 74 rated card. Uh, for the first sort of seven, eight months of the season, he looked like a really good left back when he got brought on or when he started games when Luke Shaw was injured, for example. Um, he looked really decent now. You know, I've seen people giving him a gold card. I can't give him a gold card because I think he's had a few really sketchy games, uh, you know, against Sevilla, uh, against, uh, I think it was Chelsea as well. He looks out of his depth against really good uh, right-sided players, but hopefully he can be developed into a really good left back. And last but not least, we're going with Jaden Sancho uh, for the last player. Now, Jaden Sancho deal looks on and off. From what it seems, it seems that he wants to join Man United. 
but it seems like Borussia Dortmund want a certain fee, otherwise United won't get him, basically. I think the fee is somewhere around 120 million euros, which is crazy. Um, but I can see him being a signing we make because he'll be a huge PR signing. He's English. Uh, he, uh, you know, is incredibly noteworthy. He attracts a lot of notoriety, shirt sales, things like that. Uh, so I can see him uh, getting uh, a, si a transfer to Man United. I really can't see it happening. Uh, whether it is or not, I don't know. Personally, if you want my personal opinion, I would rather we use the money to sign actual good squad bolstering players we need new defenders we need a, a new midfielder i feel like we need to bolster the attack i don't think spending all that money on one specific player will do that but you know what if it works it works i'm not the manager so i'm not gonna act like i know everything um but if you know if Jaden sancho signs for united uh i can see this being uh the card he could get next year now it could be 85 it could be 86 if he makes a sign into the premier league i can see ea boosting him to 86 because of the premier league bias in fifa um and have a pretty insane card as well bearing in mind the card on the left was his base card this year 90 dueling on a base card pretty insane um, but let me know what you think down below and let me know if you enjoyed the video as well. I'd love to hear your feedback and thoughts on the ratings and stuff like that. Uh, what teams do you want me to do next? In the comments down below, let me know what teams you want me to do next. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you later.